the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord, I have a topic for us to reason together. Amen. It just come to my mind. And I think that by God's grace, it will be very helpful for us. Amen. Now, because of the anything, it just come to my mind like, oh God, if this is what I will talk, give me the grace and the ocean in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's look at this topic. It says, from the mind to the need. From the mind to the need. To your need. From your mind to your need. Praise the Lord. Amen. We'll be looking at the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 12. And to Matthew chapter 6 verse 15, uh, 6, 14 to 15. Amen. We just, have to, we just want to discuss. That's how to wrap our mind. Then look at something that's very important. A center around forgiveness. You can say subtitle, subtopic, um, forgiveness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And it actually, it's about the the, the, um, the, the the teaching of Jesus Christ. One of the sermons, um, the sermon, part of the sermon from the mountain. Amen. And uh, part of the teaching of Jesus Christ in regard to prayer, how we should pray. Amen. Amen. Let's read the scripture, the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. Matthew 6, verse 12. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Right in the kingdom. That was the end. But anyway, if you look at that teaching, Jesus Christ was teaching them, and as he was teaching them, um, he was talking to them about about morals, attitude, about about um, life. He was talking to them about um, it's not about giving. When you give out to people, don't make it open. He was talking about you be um, moderate in the way you carry yourself. And then he dug into prayer and started talking to them about prayer. That when you pray, you go to your closet and pray. That you be not, not be like uh, the, 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 the Sadducees and them that pray and they open their windows so that men will know that they pray. And so of course they get their reward from the men that praise them that they pray too much. But now it's God that talks to us, that goes in, into the earth and he says, okay. Then someone says, oh, teach us how to pray in another portion, the book of Luke. And then he opened his mouth and said, therefore, when you pray, pray like this. Praise the Lord. And he gave them six uh, pieces of prayer. Six pieces of prayer. And if you look at it, you discover that the first three was all to God. And the other one is between we and our moral life of lifestyle on earth. The first one, he said, when you pray, say, Father, who art in heaven? I know I be the name. It was not with you, it's not to man, it's to God. Now you are uh, attributing honor, respect to God, praising the Lord, Hallelujah. honoring God. Amen. Amen. And the, 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 the second one is, let that will be done. Not my will, not your will, but his will to him. Praise the Lord. As it is in heaven. And if that one follow, it is our God of our time. Let's look at this one, the fifth one. The fifth one was what our brother read today. God bless you. And he's talking about um, forgiveness. And if you read it from another version, you will see the word, it says, uh, there is our trespasses. And another portion of the scripture, it says um, our debt. Another portion of the scripture, uh, it says our transgressions. But when you look into it, um, uh, a debt, debt is something that during the time of the Jews, they don't like to play with. So that's why some portion expresses to be debt. Actually, what Jesus Christ is talking about, God forgive me uh, my debt because I owe another person and I forgive another person their debt also. <laughs> Um, actually, when you relate it, it's now, it comes, but it boils down to, to sin. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And it went further. After, you will, if you look at that scripture in the book of Matthew chapter 6, you see that the clarification was only in this verse, set by 6. Amen. When he ran up the, the prayer, forever and ever, amen. That's what we say, amen. But now, in verse 14, he went, he, he brought back that verse verse 5, so that he would clarify what he meant by that. And then let's let's read the scripture, uh, Matthew verse 14, where he clarifies it. After all the prayer, verse 13. And then he went down and clarified one. Well, asked him, I said, why? And so, so there's something so important they want to talk about. Amen. 
Let's look at that. He said, For if ye forgive me, if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you your trespasses. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then he says, If God forgive men their trespasses, their Father, our Father which is in heaven, will forgive you also. But if you do not forgive men, you will for that verse 15. Now he said, But if you do not, now the question is, should we always forgive everybody? Should we always forgive? Is it compulsory to forgive? Today I pray God will, will give us a, an insight why it is good to forgive. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. That is the question. Is it compulsory to forgive? Is it just compulsory? Must we forgive? Amen. That, that verse 15 answers our question. Verse 15. Look at it. It says, verse 15 says, But if you forgive not, that if you fail to forgive, if you decide that I'm not going to forgive, good for you. If you decide that, no, I'm not going, no, no, that one, I'm not going to forgive. No, 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 not, not, not at all. Uh, some people always use the word, over my, over my dead body. Uh -huh. If you say over my dead body, some people used to say that. And uh, some people used to say, there was one that my, <laughs> my father used to say, he said, if my, if my mother come out from the grave, all those things, all those words that people used to use. If you used to put anything there and say, for that reason, you will not forgive. Look at what he said. He said, if you felt, if you said not, you will not forgive men that are trespasses. They are saying, they are, they are deep, they are wrong against you. They are deep against you. Amen. Neither will your father forgive you your trespasses. That one hit me. And that become the heart. From And then, all of us, as a Christian, I'm talking to us believers. We are here today because we accept Jesus as our Lord and personal Savior. We are here because today we want God to order our steps, our day to day steps, and so that we will make heaven. Is that not true? Is that not why we are living? Amen. We are not living because we are working and making money and want life to be good. Oh, life will be good. Thank God. But after that, what comes next? What will happen the day we wake up? We open our eyes. Amen. In movies, we see somebody will die by accident and you say that they will bring out the image and we will stand up. So, what your time will come? Definitely, all of us, our time will surely come one day. Amen. A man was, our, 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 our to work with this man, he was talking, he was, after he was talking, he has 12 children. He said, I trained, I trained my 12 children in this country. I was looking at him. He said, Zagata, trained 12 children. And guess what? All of them are perfect. All of them they are in millions. One, uh, three of them, they are bossers. The boss, he, 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 what that one they used to boss, keep bossing, that difficult one. Uh -huh. they, to, 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 to one. They are millionaires. And look at this man, he's working with me, sitting with me every day. He said, I'm doing this just for me. I will know. See, just, he said, I don't want to bother them, they have their life. But what I'm trying to say is that the way he trained them, oh, and he used to tell me something. He says, I am, he said, he used to say, he said, you with them, by, by the way. He says, I am closer than before. It's now going to 70 years. He says, what he has spent, what God has given him, is more than what is ahead of him. And so therefore, every day he lives so good. Amen. If you, if you want to greet somebody, past Mark, I want to tell you, since I've been there with him almost two years now, I will say, this man is a righteous man. In conduct, in everything, in waste, in lifestyle, everything, nothing. If we don't know anything that we hide from you, you're so plain and so honest. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But he said that the days ahead, they are very short. So meaning all of us, every day we see is so close to the coming of our Lord Jesus. Then what do we do? Look at this now. He said, if you fail to forgive, your heavenly father will not forgive you. Meaning you will not go to the heaven. It's as simple as putting it that way. That you will not go to heaven because God will fail to forgive you. And I ask myself, why? Why will God fail to forgive? Where will go? Then that takes us to the prayer. What do we pray? Then I say, from your heart to your knee. We can then kneel down every day. We can then gather and go keep kneeling down, kneeling down, kneeling down. If you kneel down, your heart is not with the Lord. It's in vain. He said, in the vain, did they pray to me? In vain did they call my name? And you said the other day when the, 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 the school we saw it. He says that I would say to them, okay, last week. He said, God behind me, I know you not. You work as of iniquity. And then this one of the reasons. Praise the Lord. Because it is great for Christians to say, I am going to pray. I'm going to need that and pray. 
But it's very quick for him to say, my heart is upright before the Lord. My mind, my heart. When I talk about my heart, I'm not talking about a particular location of your, of your body part. There's no location. Where is your mind? I don't know where your mind belongs into. The soldier will not even know where your mind is. No. Where is your knee? The knee I'm not talking, I'm not talking about this knee. I'm talking to a place where you pray. It could be where you are walking, you are praying about something. It could be something you are expecting. That is your place of your need. Something that you wish for. That is the place of your of your need. Something that you desire from God. Something you hope for God. It's the lifestyle that you hope. Tomorrow that you hope from God. That is your need. Your need should be sought for before by your mindset. By preparing your heart, preparing your mind. We see in the book of Mark chapter 11, verse 20, 25. It says also, it says for that the same thing. It says, and wherefore ye stand and pray, forgive if anything against anyone, forgive if there be anything against anyone, so that your heavenly father, your father, also who is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your heavenly father, who is in heaven, forgive you. If you fail to forgive, God will not forgive you. And Jesus in another place, he said the same cup that you used to measure, the same will be measured back unto you. The same cup at which you measure, the same measurement, the same way you put it. Why? Why all this? Thing? Why is God? Why is Jesus trying to peace God like that? Put God. That God is like that. If I fail to forgive, God will not forgive me. I was thinking about it last night. He just caught up me and said, Lord, this is it. I never think about that before. Do you know what I, I think about it? Listen with me. Think about it like this. Because Jesus is who? Who is Jesus to you and I? Jesus is our what? Advocate. Amen. Amen. He knows he's going to be our advocate. He knows he's going to be our lawyer. He knows he's going to be the one to mediate for us. He knows he's the one that's going to plead for our guilt. And he's teaching us how to pray. Amen. Amen. Do you know, you can, come, you can have an issue, an issue now, you have an issue, you have something going on, and you have a case. Who will advise you if you have an issue? All these things you're going on, you have a case. Oh, yeah. It's a lawyer. And when the lawyer will tell you, don't talk anyhow, don't talk to the other party, don't talk anyhow. The only, you, know, you see there's something that's going on in the TV, you don't say, the time they should have advice, don't talk, don't talk, don't talk. Hey, don't talk, you know, about that guy. Don't talk. Don't talk. But the Lord will say, don't talk. In the, in the court, we say, just answer a simple question. He will tell you how you will answer. He will prepare you. Or else you are going to make the case more difficult for you. Because looking at Jesus' case like that, he's my advocate. What is Jesus Christ trying to say here? What is he trying to prove here? He said to say, remember, when you sin, when you do other sins, when you pay people all this way, then one day you will come, and I will drag your hand. I say, Daddy, I'm come with you. I'm come with you. Um, Tony, and then we'll be looking at him. Say, Jesus, Tony, and then we will be there. Then <laughs> we we'll say, Daddy, ah, yeah, God, Tony, look at Tony, look at Tony, look at what Tony has done. Tony, look at the measure at which he has measured to this, at which he has measured to that one, at which he has measured to everybody. See, see. And God is not partial. The same way you give to God, so that is the case. And Jesus now says, Father. My blood now. I die for him. Jesus is trying to tell you, don't make the case complicated for me to plead for you. If you have all this baggage, how can I now plead for you? You are now, you have already, already told us that when man, men deal with you, you deal with them back. Okay, you deal with God, God will deal with you back. Amen? Amen. You have told us that when men, whatever they do, you don't forgive them. Ah, uh, we'll not forgive you. So all those things you have done against God. God will say, God will say, God, why will you forgive you? He says, in his own, you set your law by yourself. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. We live a life that we set our yardstick, our measure, our core by ourselves. You have set it. That is how you want it to be. That is how it's going to be. It's going to be a reflection unto you. It's going to be a reflection unto you. And then you make the case difficult for Jesus Christ to plead for you. That's how we make it difficult. And Jesus don't want that. And that's a quickly resolve it. 
quickly forgive. They don't have anybody in your mind. And so that when you plead your case, in your need, God will have the reason to forgive you. That's why he teaches us that prayer. And so that when you are forgiven, and then he just said, Oh Lord, forgive me my sin, so that I will forgive my friend. Did he say that? Amen? Did he say that? No. Read all the scripture. He didn't say, forgive me, oh Father in heaven. And now they come to the fifth one. He said, forgive me my sin, so that I will forgive. After you are forgiving me, God, give me an example. Okay, God. Now I'll go. Well, that guy that I've sinned against me, I'm forgiving you because God has forgiven me. In the first place, God has already forgiven you. That's why you're a child of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And that complication comes in and asks my second question. Why is Jesus saying this? That every time we come to pray, we'll pray like that. Is it that we will continue? They continue tell that we will continue? Because the Bible says that in the book of John, it says that he that is born of God, sin and not. Praise the Lord. Amen. That we are born of God, that we are not supposed to sin. We don't live the life of sin. Amen. Why? Why would we do it? Why do we pray? Why would we pray that? And I say, I look at it here. I say, it brings us to the point the minute that our response to every personal insult, injury, no matter who you are, Reverend Bishop, you must have somebody against you, especially in this world of internet. They will post something about you. Miss what one word they will put he said, this is what he said. Injury. Not for the moment. Resentment, anger, vengeance, self-pity. All these things we come, we come from somehow, either from house, from outside, from work, from whatever, even from the members of your inner account, from your co work, from your workers, from the one that you, you that are serving you, you will see all the things. They will make you annoyed, they will make you offended. Offense will come. Praise the Lord. Offense will come. Even Jesus Christ, as mighty as great is, is hundred percent for hundred percent man. Inside his cabinet, inside his cabinet, someone is here to kill him. It, it, will, will, will it be as, a more tougher than that? Someone is here to plan the coup. Is the one going to sell. It was it, it sold him. It sold him. Inside in his own inner carcass. So if you are Jesus in your heart, you know this guy just stood up. And you know with all the everything, you know, they connect with them. Oh, he just stood, stood up. So really, is he going to sell him? What is really? This guy. Amen. 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 As a woman, when the one person will be with me, tell this guy is bad. <laughs> Even as I said it, the one that deep after me is the one that he still going to serve me. If we you and I, you are just saying, he said, you see him as he's going, he's going to serve you. <laughs> Amen. He said, see, what is he said, oh, that thing that you are preparing your mind, do it quickly. The spirit, the same thing was reacting inside of him. But in all, oh, he find the way. They find a way to contain the anger. They find a way to forgive. Ah, look at Stephen. He was being sold to them. As was being sold to them, he said, Father, forgive them. For they don't know what they are doing. Mm -hmm. This is easy. We can read it. Put yourself in their shoe. Jesus Christ. As he was carrying the cross, as he was carrying it, and look at the woman that were weeping. He said, Woman, wait not for me. Weep for your children, children. And he look at them and say, Mother, behold that son. Son, behold that mother. And he said, mm, Forgive them. For they don't know what they are doing. She said, forgive them. At the point of death, you and I, our own has not even reached at the point of death. You can still reach, we can still make our money from the thing. It's not, it's not even come to death at all. Just come to embarrassment, small embarrassment. You will see our anger. Just come to small disappointment. You will see our anger. We don't forgive you. Just come to small letdown. You will see we cannot contain it. We are talking about people that have been linked to, to straight. Even they were about to crucify them. The Peter was turned upside down. They were crucified. They were putting the oil, everything. They would have been releasing. Don't you know that some causes that you will release on them, you even can make them die instantly? But that anger was that. Was even giving them instruction. No, turn me upside down. I'm not a master. Right? That's who Christians are. We Christians, that's who we are. I'm telling you. Like as we were we 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 I said, does it mean that I know we don't pop up? But let us have something that we, they, they used to put in the car. See, when you are driving the car, there's something we say, shock as well. When you hit the portrait, it will bounce back again. Let us have a moment of shock as ever to absorb everything that is thrown upon us. Things are going to come up. No, let, let it be known. 
whether you know you like it or not, things will come up. As a child of God, we live our life. And Jesus says in the book of John, chapter 8, verse 30, 34, he said something so striking there. Hmm. The master was, he says, and in anger, his master delivered him to jailers until he should be, he should pay his debt. That he says, so also my father, which is in heaven, will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your debtor. We learned that three weeks ago. Amen. In also the school. He says, also your, the master, he said, that one, that one forgives someone. After you have treated the other servant, he said, forgive you. You fail to forgive others. Jesus also used that one as a teaching to us that forgiveness is very important. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the question is that is only forgive, true forgiveness that God will forgive us? No, it's not just true only forgiveness that God all that things. That God will forgive us. So when we forgive us, God forgive us also. For God forgive us, not forgiveness. He forgives us because of his grace. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He forgives us. Forgiveness comes from a heart of grace. Grace. It's not no, it's not that. It's just from the heart of grace that forgiveness comes. So meaning that we will carry that, we will hook our mind to the Lord so that you give us the grace to forgive. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's not by man, might, by power. No, by the Spirit, says the Lord. And if I have no forgiveness. Now how does it play out? Think about it, 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 think about it this way. You will have issue with somebody. You have a quarrel with somebody. I saw a quarrel with the person, and you just like, what type of nonsense it is? This is the, you know, it's like a word of anger. You just, whatever, you bang the door, and you leave the place, and you say, wow, well, in fact, I will have a position to show this person. And I will put it down, all this thing that you have been doing, 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 doing. And you know, the other day, the other day, the other day, you have this body in your mind. A child of, as a child of God, you have this body in your mind. I want to tell you how it comes to play. As a child of God, you have this body in your mind. In your mind. So, Jesus was not saying, remember that example, he was not saying that we will continue in sin, that grace will abide. Anytime we pray, many times we go, forgive me, because I'm forgiving somebody, I do it, I forgive him. No. But he will say that, that we will be able to find the spirit, there's a spirit called the spirit of unforgiveness. We'll be able to hand check that spirit, put it in control. Like the example I'm giving, the like, let's say somebody's name is Tony. And that Tony was fed up. He said, hey, he did it the other day. He did it the other day. I will deal with him. I will deal with him. I will deal with him. I will not take it again. This is enough. I put it the other day. I just took it. One day it will fall into my, into my trap. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But as he went back home that night, he was about to sleep. As he was about to sleep, I was just reading the Bible. And then he talked about the mercy of God. He talked about, he talked about how Jesus died for his in the same. He thought about how God pardoned him for all he has done in his life. He just done to him. Say what? I do not desire to hold the grudges any longer. Say, Lord, you have read, you have read me. You dead read at me out of my selfish indignation, indignation, out of my unforgiving spirit, out of my failures of life, and you forgive me. So I will forgive that guy. I will forgive that guy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And why did he do that? He forgave him so that he will not fall into temptation. Praise the Lord. Amen. He forgave him so that he will not fall into temptation. But God died the next temptation. If he fail to forgive, he will fall into that temptation. Amen. The scenario that played out in that meeting was an avenue for him to fall into temptation. But when now, he now said, oh God, I have to call him. Oh, Father, brother, I, I'm sorry for that. What I did to you today. I'm very sorry. Sorry, for, please forgive me. I know that I acted uh, inappropriately. I'm sorry for that. Uh, please forgive me. And you forgive. Praise the Lord. Take up the call and call him. Forgive me. That's what the child of God does. He put that into check. And the devil will not have, have it against him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So forgiveness is 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 enabling grace of God. It's the grace of God. To forgive is good grace. It's not by power, it's not by mind. But we we'll look at it in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 18, verse 24. 
He said, when he began to tell to them, he said, one of them bought him and says, I want the 10,000, let me remember the, 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 the ta talents. And the other one come. See, they were not able to make the profit job because of their service. It was the grace of God that they were able to succeed. The other one said, no, I know your word, put it there. You know what happened to that, the other one? When we look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 19, every tree, then it says, every tree that was not planted by my father will be rooted away. Look at your life. Look at your li our lives. Forgiveness is one of the trees that is not planted by God in any Christian's life. Amen. Um, unforgiveness, I'm saying. Unforgiveness is one of the, of the trees that is not planted by God. And it will be rooted away. Praise the Lord. The lifestyle, the person that lives a life of unforgiveness will be plucked out. May God help us in Jesus' name. When the road to wake up, unforgiveness will make men not to enter the kingdom of God. Because why? It's not of the unforgiveness, it's the sin that it is. Amen. It's what? The sin. It's the sin. Amen. Like every other commandment of Jesus, it was one that Jesus commanded said we should forgive. And if you fail to forgive, it lay there in verse 15, where we read Matthew chapter 6, and verse, verse 14 to 15, there where we read, it says what? It says, Your heavenly, our heavenly father will not also forgive us. If you know that God will not forgive you, then that is a, a, a backup for you. That, was a, that is a reason. No question asked for us to be able to forgive. And then the other time was asking, Peter was asking, how many times? And Jesus said, 70 times, 70 times a day. Meaning it is endless. How big? How can what type of, what type of offense? Everyone, all type of offense, we will, want, we will come in place for him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But one thing is certain, the person who has true, thorough mercy has been born from above that cannot be the same anymore. There's someone that is born of God, cleans of God. Remember that God now cleans in our heart and that we no longer the same, that all things have changed from us. Amen. 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 A person that is changed, there will be a trace of moving towards, towards perfection. Not that you are just perfect, but you are now moving towards perfection. And it can be said that to this, 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 no. This, 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 no. You, you, you know where you are going. You are going up, up. Not going down, down. May God help us in Jesus' name. In our days. He cannot go on singing and singing. That's what I'm saying. He cannot go on swimming in the same and the same again. You can't relate with me in this. Amen. I just say some years ago, we, 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 uh, we have a, um, a convenience store called the supermarket. Because I'm the first one, the grown up there, I'm the one in charge. My dad wants it, but I'm the one that child one that monitors activity. He goes to the one in charge and brings things. I'm the one that sells it. Amen. Amen. So sell cigarettes is my worst problem. problem. Amen. Amen. Cigarettes, other things, wine, all this wine, alcohol wine. And I will not. Do you know that some people deliberately, like after church on Sunday like that, after church on Sunday, I'll go and open the shop. I will open it. Allow me, or I can close it on Sunday morning to I have to. I will open it as I'll open it. So some guys they will just deliberately so that they will come and find me trouble. Because they know that I will not sell. I will have issue to sell it. After I've come to church like this, I pray God, Father, this sin, I will not sin it again. I will not touch that thing again. I will not sin again. So I was going. Don't just open the door. Just say, you can give me a cigar now. Huh? Come give me a cigar. And to the worst thing one day, I just bring the pocket. I give the guy. Take it out. He said, you got lighter then. I bring lighter. He said, light it for me. Jesus Christ. And it's my dad's friend. It's my dad's best friend. I said, sir, I will not light it. I will call your father. I will not buy. And we will not come here and bite it again. I said, I will not, I will not, light, light, I will not light it. He was like, see, you must light it. You th that is deliberately airport. I said, I will not light it. <laughs> if you don't want to buy it, don't buy it. So I will tell your father, you wait. Father, I come. Say, your son, you're abusing me. <laughs> so I said, I'm abusing you. He said, why do you say you don't want to lie? I said, you don't want to lie for me. I said, I will not lie for God. I will not lie. 
my father starts because he had to sign so a friend. Say you this is, you didn't think I'm a, I'm a devil? You devil. So the money of a devil is the one that you used to train your school. <laughs> just like that, just like that. In many cases like that. But I thank God today is born again. And now he's, he's a leader in the church. Woo! Praise the Lord. The day he born again, he had to come and say, I'm born again like you. I've been waiting to be. I said, I've been waiting for my prayer. I've walked. Amen. Amen. Anytime he's talking to me, he says, Ah, this is the way that you have shown us. So that's what we are walking. The way you have shown us. Praise the Lord. I'm happy. And thank God that I stood my ground on all those things. On all those things. I told you many times, he said, You will not put yourself for me. I said, I will not. I will not beg you. I will not change. I will not say because of that. I will change. Those things. Even though, like, if you look at it, you are going extreme. But oh, those, those things, they help me. Amen? Those things help me. He come to a time like that, they told them, well, leave him, he's a foolish boy. Don't, don't let him, if you want to buy, we'll come for all, all of my children, or wait for me, I will sell it for you. Then, he goes like that. And people will come and visit him. Because they a real drinker. Everything he drinks, smoke everything. And then they come. When they come, you are the first son, you are going to, go to serve the bar wine, serve all these things. I will not serve. Even the king of the come, I will not serve. He, instead of that, he said, forget that one, forget that one, they will call another person. He grew to that state, he grew to that state, and then he just he said, look like a abandoned one. This one, you don't need him. You know, when I'm doing things like this, you don't need him. You know, so that is how that, he said, like, forget that one. Amen. But today, thank God. But what are we saying, it's talking about? There are things that you have to put your hand down as a born again. You let it go and cling it to where? To heaven. So that we will attain, you will make heaven. For you to make heaven, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The mercy of the Lord will be there. The grace will be there. The seed of God will be planted in you. The seed of righteousness. In John chapter 1, verse 3 and 9. In order that the righteousness is required by the law, that the law will be fulfilled in us. Who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Hi. We will now walk not according to the law, but according to the spirit of the law. The spirit now will guide us on what we will do. The spirit will guide us on what we will discuss. I am telling you, let's be honest to ourselves. This topic, this topic, this topic, some topic or all topic you call it now, forgiveness is going to make many doors to be shut that day. We can go to our knee. I know I tell you what you need for. You can go to him. But Jesus said, prepare your heart. Prepare it. Make sure after you have taught six points on the Lord's prayer, he come back to it. He said, because without this, your father will not forgive you. And I told you today, I say it's like an advocate, it's your lawyer. He cannot present your case. If your lawyer has no way to present your case, you lose it. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. If he cannot present it, you lose it. You make my better shame. And that's why Jesus said, when you come to my father and I've seen all your work, I will be ashamed and turn to you. As I don't, this guy, I don't know that one. Don't used to call my name. I don't know that one. It's in the scripture. He said, I'm saying, you find me. You walk, I don't know you. He said, Jesus, 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 I know you, I know you. I'll call your name, I'll call your name. No, you're not calling it right. How can we call it right? He said, this is one of the things that Jesus told us. We are talking about one today. The forgiveness. Let's settle it. Amen. Amen. We look on, on those that even are point at the point of death, they forgive. How much more we? Not at the point of death. We are at the point of embarrassment. Amen. Amen. Because he embarrassed me before the co-worker. Mm. And at the point of embarrassment, because of the way you deal with me, maybe it's old man and wife in the same room. Nobody is there. Only two of you in the same room. Uh -huh. Because of that thing you do. Nobody is there. Just